Hepatitis C is a virus infection that infects the liver. Uh, it, uh, it's acquired mainly through blood transfusions or, or contaminated blood. Uh, most people were infected 20, 30 years ago. We have very few new infections with hepatitis C today. Hepatitis C is a virus that's usually contracted through blood products um, that over time can cause inflammation of the liver, and that inflammation can cause scarring, which can cause uh, liver disease. Most people contract hepatitis C through uh, blood transfusions or injection drug use. Uh, it can be transmitted through sexual exposure, uh, occasionally through contaminated medical instruments. Uh, so there has to be blood to blood transmission. There's actually no short term symptoms of the disease. Uh, most people, when they're exposed to hepatitis C, they uh, don't have any symptoms at all. They feel very well. Uh, this is a disease that takes a long time to progress, so uh, patients generally feel very, very well um, until the disease has reached uh, a pretty serious point and uh, you're reaching uh, some of the end stages of liver disease. Hepatitis C is a disease that once it infects someone, that infection tends to be persistent in about 80 to 85 percent of people, and so it lasts for years and decades. And of the people that have this infection over decades, we do see an increase in the risk of cirrhosis or scarring of the liver, and in some of those with cirrhosis, an increase in liver cancer uh, potential. Uh, when the hepatitis C virus causes um, a great deal of scarring and cirrhosis of the liver, uh, these patients often have symptoms related to their hepatitis C, um, and their quality of life goes down quite a bit. Um, and when you reach this point, liver transplantation is a very vi viable option that can improve quality of life and make patients live a lot longer after transplantation. Hepatitis C is diagnosed through a blood test. There's a blood test that detects an antibody to hepatitis C. And if a patient has evidence of hepatitis C in their blood uh, through that antibody test, we can measure the virus itself directly. Now the question really is who should be tested, who should be screened for, these, uh, for this infection. And it's someone obviously who has a risk factor for hepatitis C. If they've ever used injection drugs, ever had a blood transfusion before the blood was screened for hepatitis C in, in 1992, uh, anyone with an organ transplant uh, should be screened and tested for hepatitis uh, C infection. Uh, the previous standard of care therapy involved two medications. The first medication uh, is called pegylated interferon. Uh, it's a formulation of interferon which stimulates the immune system. Uh, this medication is a self-administered self injection that's given uh, by a patient uh, once a week. The other medication is called ribavirin, which is an oral medication that's taken daily. Uh, these two medications uh, work together uh, to decrease the viral level and in some cases was able to cure the virus. Hepatitis C has been treated. We've had treatments for hepatitis C since the early 1990s. Uh, in the early 1990s, the success rate of those interferon treatments for hepatitis C uh, resulted in a cure of about 6% of people treated. Uh, over the decade of the 90s, with improvements in therapy, we've improved that success rate to around 40% by the end of the 1990s. In the first decade uh, of this century, uh, from 2000 to 2010, the success rate only increased by about another 10%. So up until these new therapies were approved, our success is only about 50% of patients that were treated uh, could be cured of their hepatitis C.